Hello and welcome to the world of NDE 4.0. My name is Johannes Reiner and today is a great day. Because today we will continue our journey into the world of ultrasonics. Now in the last video we talked about the very basics of pulse echo ultrasonics. And you can find a, vid a link to that video right here. Um, and today we will continue this journey. We will be talking about the basic acoustic and ultrasonic waveforms. We will be talking about refraction and Snell's law. Now, what we said last time is we have this ultrasonic generator, we have a probe, and the generator is actually generating a very short pulse of oscillations, which is then traveling through our component. Now, you can imagine the probe is oscillating this way, and then the wave is going through the component in the same way. So actually our excitation is going the same way as our um, propagation direction. And this is what we call actually a longitudinal or pressure wave. So this is shown here. Now this is a continuous wave and what we have is actually this one traveling through our component, but I guess you get the, the image. Now, we have a second waveform, which we can have in our component, and that's called a transversal or shear wave. In that case, actually, our excitation is going perpendicular to our propagation direction. So if my wave is propagating this way through our component, then our oscillation is going up and down, as it is shown here. Now, what's one of the differences between the two of them? If we take, for example, a two megahertz wave in steel, um, we're talking about yeah, a, wave, a frequency of two megahertz, and the sound velocity in steel is about 5,924L longitudinal wave. For a shear wave, actually with the same frequency, the speed of sound is slower. Now it's only 3,200 meters per second which results in a different wavelength. The wavelength is our speed of sound divided by our frequency, so it's 3 millimeters for a longitudinal wave, and it's about 1.6 millimeters, which is about half for the transversal wave. Now, if you think about the speed of sound in air, that one is actually way slower. It's about a tenth of the speed of sound which we have in steel. This is one of the reasons why, if you think about putting your ear onto the tracks of a train, you hear the train way better than you hear it through the air. Because your wave is coming way quicker. Reason number two is actually that your sound attenuation is way lower also in steel than you have it in the air. Okay, so those are the two very fundamental waveforms. Now there are a couple more, and I want to mention two of them. One is a so-called surface wave, or also Rayleigh wave. Rayleigh wave is, travels right on the surface of a component. So if we have air here and material down here, that wave is really traveling on the surface, and then we have an exponential decay from the surface down into the material. Now, if we think about this surface wave traveling in a very thin component, so we have air, material, and air very close together, then we are getting something called a lamp wave. And the lamp wave is actually, we see two modes. One is the symmetrical lamp wave, and one is an asymmetrical lamp. So far, so good. Now, what we talked about up to the moment is we have our probe, we have our oscillation, and then we have our sound package traveling through that component. And what we create is actually a longitudinal wave. So how do we get actually to a shear wave? Now, what we can see here is, let's say we have our probe, we have as a coupling media, we have water. So this is immersion testing. 
And then we have as a material too, let's say steel or aluminum or whatever we want to inspect. Now, our ultrasonic pulse leaves as a longitudinal wave our probe travels through the, through the water and at the boundary between material one and material two, actually what we get is a reflection at the same angle we had our incoming wave. And not only we get a reflection, we also get a signal in our material too, in our component. And that wave, the angle of that wave depends on the relationship between the velocity in water and the velocity in steel or in our material. And as the sound velocity of a longitudinal wave is different from the sound velocity of a shear wave, actually we are getting both a longitudinal wave and a shear wave in the same component. And we can calculate the angles using this um, formula. Now, this is already kind of an issue you might find in some cases with ultrasonic testing. Because you might end up that you have two different waveforms in the same material. So if you think about that you have an a flaw or an indication in your component, you will not only find it with the longitudinal or the shear wave, and in some cases you will find them with both of them. Luckily, if you have a small angle, your longitudinal wave will be way predominant, and if we're getting to bigger angles, actually we will not have any longitudinal wave anymore, we only have a shear wave. But we will come to that in a second. Now, to give you a little bit of feeling about the speed of sound we have in the different materials, that's about what we have in water, that's what we have about in plexiglass and in rexolite. Now, rexolite might be the material you want to use instead of plexiglass because actually your sound attenuation is better in the, in the rexolite and your, your coupling to the media is better. You get a better signal to noise ratio using Rexolite and plexiglass. That's why I have it here. And then we have our typical velocities, let's say in steel and aluminum and whatever material you want to inspect. Now, instead of water, we already said we can use plexiglass. We can use actually, we do not have to sink our component into a bath of water we can also use a wedge, like this one here, made out of plexiglass, made out of rexolite, made out of whatever. And yeah, then we can use this with direct coupling. And doing this, we can actually see, okay, now we have what we talked about, launch and tool wave, they're directly produced by the by our transducer. And angles are created by refraction. So we can use longitudinal wave probes, number one for straight beam and number two for angles. Shear waves. Shear waves we can only create due to refraction. We cannot produce them directly. Actually, there are some specialized probes, but the normal ones, you have to use a wedge and you can only use it for angles. Now let's see which angles we get. Now if we take here those parameters for plexiglass wedge and in steel, case one, we have a 10 degree wedge. Now we are getting a 22.6 degree L wave in our steel component and a 12 degree shear wave at the same time. Increasing the angle to 27 degrees, now we get actually a L wave of 90 degrees. So now we have a wave traveling on the surface. We already talked about surface wave. That's how you create them. And for a shear wave, we have a 32.8 degree angle. Now this angle of 27 degrees is called the first critical angle. Because if we go to an even bigger angle, Actually, we do not have any more any L wave in our component. We only have shear waves. So, but you can already see the benefit of it. 
if we go to more than those 27 degrees, we only have to shear within the component. So therefore, if we have an indication, we do not risk to get two signals from the same indication. So if you want to inspect a component with an angle of more than those 33 degrees, you should use shear wave probes. For all the angles below the 33, the longitudinal waves would be better. So, but this would mean something like a wedge angle of above, about below 10 degrees uh, of, an, of an angle. Oops, that was going quick. Now, once we reach the 56.5, then we actually are coming to this to the second critical angle, because now our shear wave is traveling on the surface of our component. And once we come above the 56.5, we have actually no wave introduced into the component. We only have reflection. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, any questions, please feel free to ask them anytime. Um, Next time, we will get into the working principle of phased array ultrasonics. P-A-U-T, PAUT. As usual, you will find more information in the description. I hope you like this video. I hope you give me a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope I will see you soon. So thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye.